Hey everyone, welcome back to JavaScript tutorial. In this tutorial, we will take a look at global and block scoping. You know that when you declare a variable, it has a specific scope. You can only access that variable in that specific scope. But now, we will understand what is global scoping. So when JavaScript program starts, before any function called, it is a global scope. Anything which you declare in the global scope will available all over the program. Anything which you declare in the global scope is called global scope. Frankly speaking, global scope have a bad reputation because global scope available in all over the program and it causes the error if you declare the same identifier. I personally suggest you to don't rely on the global scope. Now consider the following example and understand what is disadvantages when you are using the global scope. So I will declare a simple example here. So I will say let name is equal to daily. Then I will create a one more variable. So I will say let sub is equal to 4000. After that I will create a function here. So I will say function show and then in the statement I will say console.log and print the name value so I will say dollar and in the curly braces I will specify name you have sub subscribers so here I just wanted to print daily you have 4000 subscribers right after that I will create a one more function so I will say function make and then in the body of that function I will say console.log and say thank you so much subs subscribers and I really wanted to thank you to subscribing this channel and give me a lot of support. Now move on to the example. Now in this example we are using global variables. So here name and subscriber is the global variable which you can access anywhere in the program you can see both functions are highly dependent on the global variable accidentally or say intentionally if we change the name or value of the global variables then this will affect to the function because both functions are rely on the global variable now the better approach to use this global variable is this so here I will just get rid of these global variables and here I will declare an object so I will say user is equal to and in the body of that object I will declare two properties so I will say name daily and I will declare a second property sub 4000 I will just change this sentence and just remove the global variables and specify my object properties here. So I will say user dot name and here I will say user dot serves and here I will say user dot serves. So now the result would be same. So in this example we just put global variables in the single object doing this i will reduce global variable name conflict suppose if you wanted to declare more than two variables then you can't use global scoping because it causes the error of a name conflict in that situation when you are using more than two variables specify them in the object using this approach definitely helps you to reduce name conflict right now you know that what is global scoping now we will move to the next topic and understand what is block scoping block scoping is opposite from the global scoping in the block scoping which specify a specific area to access the specific variable value outside of the scope you can't access that variable value Using block scoping, you can specify boundary to the variable, preventing access from outside function. 
block scoping is a statement surrounded by curly braces. Now let's take an example and understand what is a block scoping. So here I will just print some messages on the console and print variable values on the console. So I will say console.log and in the parenthesis I will say block start. After that I will declare a curly braces here. So I will start the block from here and in this block I will say console.log and say inside block. Just after that I will declare a variable so I will say constant x is equal to 5 and print that value on the console so i will say console.log and say x here just after the block when the block end i will say console.log and print the message block end and after that i will access the x variable and say console.log outside of the block x is equal to and print x value here so here you have a standalone block Usually, a block is a part of control flow statements such as if and for loop. But it is valid syntax to have a block of its own. Now, when you execute this statement, you will get a few messages on the console. So here, you can see JavaScript first start the block and print message inside block. After that, it will print x value on the console and then print block end just after that we will print the x variable on the console just after that we wanted to access the x value which we specified in the block so when you do that you will get an error message x is not defined here you can see we cannot access the x variable outside of the block so now you know that what is the use of block statement. That's it. I hope you understand this lecture. I have asked a question in the comment. Answering that question will help you to understand this topic more easily. That is all for now. We will see you in the next tutorial.